Hi, my name's Rick Shields here at Trafford Golf Centre in Manchester to do some flight scope data today for the TaylorMade SLDR, the, the adjustable driver. Uh, I've just done a quick intro video, you can check that out on my channel. Uh, but today's always going always to be all about the flight scope figures, uh, kind of distances, what it's doing, how it's moving, how it's changing the game, apparently so, how it's going to make you hit the ball further and better and all this jazz. So let's see if it actually does what it says on the tin. Um, I've got this set up as neutral at the moment. The features on this that you can move it from fade to draw. So you can move this adjustable weight with getting the screw and moving it about. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to leave it in its most neutral setting. Um, after this video, I'm going to then test it up against probably its best rival, which is the TaylorMade R1. So I'm going to test up longest driver um, competition against the R1, see which one wins. But this one, I'm going to hit 10 shots, kind of give you a bit of an average of, of distances and everything else, and see how forgiving and easy it is to hit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter. And let's get on with the, uh, the testing. So, SLDR. We're going to be hitting real golf balls here on Flightscope. I'm actually in the American Golf Fitting Bay today. Uh, my, my bay is just being used at the moment. So, I'm in here with the, uh, the Flightscope set up, ready to use. So, let's give it a bit of a smash and see what's happening with it. So, beautiful looking club behind the ball. Really sits nicely. See what distances it's getting. So, solid hit. Seems we've gone fair distance. That's gone 290, that one. So, quite a nice hit for the first shot with that. Had a nice little draw on it, which is normally my flight anyway. Uh, 108 club head speed, 158 um, ball speed, which is not bad. So, the smash factor is 1.45. Uh, spinning 4,000 and launching at 13.8. Yeah, it's nice. It feels like a club that you could kind of enjoy hitting it. And you get a lot of feel for it as well. It doesn't particularly feel quite as, um, I don't know, as tinny as the R1, let's say. It feels like a more solid golf club. I went 271 that time, slightly less on the club head speed. Only the 105 on the club head speed there. That one felt really nice. Hopefully that should get a little bit more distance out of that. 270 is probably... Don't feel quite 100% with that distance. 281, that's more like it. 107.8 club head speed. It's launching quite up there, launching at 14.9. Uh, that's better spin, 2-1. You're kind of looking really for about 13, 12, 12 and a half, 13 degrees for your launch, really. Um, and spinning about 2.5 to 2.8, really. Feels very solid to hit. Whether it's going to revolutionise the game, I'm not sure. Nice club. It's, uh, it's giving me some nice flight, 272. So let's just kind of see my average out of the four there so far, so we can get a bit of an idea. So the average out of the four there so far has been 278. So not bad. Conditions out here today, a little bit colder than normal. Temperatures are starting to drop towards the back end of the year now. You can really start to feel it, even though I'm still in a T-shirt, I'm not a... fady that one but it seems to have still got the distance out of that a little left to right shot and we're up to 280 there so it's not too bad distance wise i'm just going to hit a couple more shots for you so you don't have to watch them all i'm going to fast forward a few of these so you can see i'm just going to hit four more and then we'll have a look at the average distances and see what it's doing and i cannot wait to test it up against the r1 so enjoy watching guys like i said i'm going to do a little average in a minute but Enjoy watching the rest of the video. So, after hitting 10 shots on flight, it's got there, it's given me some nice averages. Uh, 281 total distance, which is not too bad on today's conditions. Remember, everything is kind of subjective to today's conditions. There's a little bit of breeze, it's a bit colder, a bit wetter. Um, some of the other videos that I've done, I've been hitting it over 300 yards. But that was on that day, so it might have been a slightly better weather. That's testing it today. I'm going to now test it up against the R1 in the next video, so that'll be more a better comparison of where it should sit in distance-wise, really. But 281, I feel that's a fair distance for, for this club, really. It's coming out nice and low. It's coming out with a bit of um, kind of kind of 
a quite a big kick. The smash factors were quite high in a lot of the shots. Uh, ball speed was kind of averaging, about, uh, sorry, club head speed for me was averaging about 108, so that's normally about a stiff shaft. And the ball speed was coming out at, uh, average ball speed was 154 miles per hour. So not bad with the ball speed as well. It's a very nice club. I'm not going to say it's the greatest in the world, but it is a nice club. It gives you a lot of versatility. It's nice to hit. It's great looking. Let's test it up against the R1 in the longest drive competition next video. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. My name's been Rick Shields down here at Trafford Golf Centre in Manchester. Thank you to American Golf at Trafford, who's let me use the fitting bay today with the flight scope. And ready for the R1 longest drive test. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe, click the like button, and thanks very much for watching.